Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old School Wednesday. Shit. Saturday Night Zelda. Fuck. Nobody clipped that. Uh, I'm gonna fight this wolfman! I'm not afraid of you, wolfman. This is every enemy in, like, in Ocarina, by the way. While he's running, you can't hit him. You have to wait for him to attack, dodge his attack, then hit him. That's like every enemy in, in this game. It's actually, it gets to be kind of annoying. She wants me to go to the volcano. What would Saria say if, oh, okay, maybe she does want me to go to see Saria. That's fine. Get out of here with that. Acting like you're all that in a bag of potato chips. Gotta make our way through this little forest maze. We're gonna go see our, uh... Our good buddy, our friend with the lovely green hair who gave us a great little present. She's gonna teach us the song of our people. The song of our people, by the way, is... funny if she had a doctor girlfriend voice. This is the sacred forest meadow. It is my secret place. More rolling the dark souls. Well, you know how it is, man. Sometimes you just gotta roll with stuff. I suppose it'll be very important for both of us someday. That is what I feel. If you play the ocarina here, you can talk with the spirits of the forest. Would you like to play the ocarina with me? Yes. Try to follow along with the mel melody that I will play. Are you ready? Man, that... That audio shrieks a little bit, doesn't it? What's going on, Squinty? I hope you're having a great day. Great, great. Please don't forget this song. Do you promise? When you want to hear my voice, play Saria's song. You can talk with me anytime. She never has anything interesting to say. Although the song is also useful for... In the event that somehow you've forgotten what your mission is, and you haven't had Navi remind you recently, you can get Navi to ask you what's up. You can ask Navi what's up. Well... Despite your being at workness, I hope that you make a lot of money and then have a lot of power and then get a lot of women. That's what the order of operations is in uh, in Scarface, right? First you get the money, then you get the power, etc. Pick up some milk. Nope, oh, not milk. Berries. Fairy Godparents! Now I need Zelda's letter, and we're gonna go back to Kakariko Village. Hooray! Come on, let me climb the ladder. Oi vey, this game.
The Lost Woods also serves as a hub for, um, like, quick travel, kind of. After I get the bombs, I'm able to travel from the woods to the top of Death Mountain very quickly. And after I get the silver scale from the Zoras, I'm able to travel from the woods to Zoras Domain and back very quickly. Which cuts down a lot of the travel time on the eastern end of... Uh, this way, nope. This way is a way out. Which lets me cut down a lot of the travel time on the eastern edge, edge of the map. Which isn't that important after I start to learn the warp songs, because there's songs that are going to let me warp, but I don't get them until later. But now we're all set to go do another dungeon. Yeah, a lot of walking. Zora, like, alright, so they made Hyrule Field very large because they wanted this game to feel like it was really big. And the reality is, yeah, it's it's bigger than a lot of the games that were available at the time. Like, there was a lot of open space that you could explore. The unfortunate truth is that there wasn't really a whole lot in the open space that you could explore. Which was why when we saw the map for Breath of the Wild, and everyone was like, oh, wow, you know, this... Like, they showed it off at, they showed a demo of it at, like, an E3 a couple of years ago, and they were like, wow, you know, this is a really cool map, there's a lot going on here, and they were like, this isn't the map. What do you mean? Like, this is this tutorial area, this is the starter zone, and they're like, starter zone's as big as Ocarina of Time, then. And they're like, yes, the starter zone is as big as Ocarina of Time. No, that can't be right. And then they're like, hit the map button, zoom out, that's the map. And they're like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! The road is closed beyond this point. Can't you read the sign over there? Oh, I see. You're just a kid and you can't read yet. Ha ha ha. What an asshole. I'm going to show him Zelda's letter and he'll be like, Oh, excuse me, sir. This is surely Princess Zelda's handwriting. Well, let's see. Hmm, okay. Does every low-level peon guard know Zelda's handwriting? This is Barf. He's under my orders to save Hyrule. <laughs> That's a great letter. What kind of funny game has our princess come up with now? Okay, okay, all right, you can go now. Just be careful, Mr. Hero. Wah ha ha ha. And he's gonna let me up the ma on that? On on just that? He thinks it's not. Se mm. He's a bad guard. There aren't any good guards in this game. If you're gonna climb up Death Mountain. You should equip a proper shield. Did that. It's an active volcano, after all. If you go back to Hyrule Castle Town Market, you should check out the bazaar. They sell the shield you need there. Tell them I sent you, and they should give you a special discount. If you think you're good to go already, don't worry about it. Yeah, I got a shield for free. I stole it out of a grave. That's a special favor of you. I don't expect to do it just because I gave you the great tip. I'm just asking. Have you ever been to the Happy Mask shop that just opened in Hyrule Castle Town Market? No, because it just opened. Everyone's been talking about it. Dude, I don't really play Hearthstone anymore. This Lich King thing makes me want to kind of play Hearthstone again. The trouble is, is I don't have any of those cards, and I'm not really willing to drop the money to get a bunch of cards right off the bat because I don't play the game very much. So, I'm living vicariously through streamers. I've basically had my entire Hearthstone experience so far has been through Kriparian and Mage of Death. Um, I'm desperately awaiting the return of Day9, who I'm certain is going to make a ridiculous ramp druid and an absolutely bananas shadow priest. He's going to make the most memely decks that you've ever fucking seen, and it's going to be a glorious show, and I can't wait. Tektites! I hate you! I don't like Tektites. 
Uh, it'll be glorious. But he's out doing... Dota things? He's doing Dota things, right? He is an announcer at a Dota event that occurred, that is occurring, that will occur. I don't know what he's, he's doing something. I have no interest in Dota, personally, so I don't follow that aspect of, uh, of his schedule. I just like the Hearthstones. Ah! Goron! Yeah, you are hearing mooing, and it's because that there is a cow in that cave back there, but I can't get to him because he's, uh, I need, I need the bombs. I need the, I need the biggity bams. Okay, these are the Gorons. Hey, guy. Oh, I'm so hungry. Everyone feels faint from hunger because of the food shortage in this town. We are in danger of extinction. It's all because we can't enter our quarry, the Dodongo's Cavern. We Gorons live on a diet of rocks. I will repeat that. We Gorons live on a diet of rocks. There is a food shortage because there's not enough rocks on their volcano. The most delicious and nutritious rocks are found in the Dodongo's Cavern, but that seems like ancient history now. We've become such gourmets that we can't stand to eat rocks from anywhere else. So instead, we're going to die. I want to eat the top sirloin rocks from the Dodongo's Cavern. Ooh. Hey! It's dangerous for a little kid like you to come out here. You might fall down. I plan on falling down. If I'm not mistaken, you came out here to eat the red stone. Well, too bad it's not here. That's not why you're here. You're looking for a spiritual stone? You must mean that delicious looking red stone that was once displayed here. I was so hungry that I thought it would be okay to just give it one tiny little lick. So I snuck out here, but it was already gone. I think Big Brother took it away. He always says that everyone is after that red stone. We probably shouldn't have it in the middle of town then if everyone wants to eat it. Big Brother has shut himself into the room saying, I will wait here for the royal family's messenger. Well, guess what? I'm the royal family's messenger today, bitch! Again, I have to complain that Impa insists that only members of the royal family are permitted to be taught this song, and yet members of not the royal family are know the song enough to recognize when it's when I'm supposed to use it to enter a place. Like Darunia here. What's going on, buddy? What the heck even? Who are you? When I heard the song of the royal family, I expected their messenger had arrived, but you're just a little kid. Has Darunia, the big boss of the Gorons, really lost so much status to be treated like this by his sworn brother, the king? Now I'm really angry. Get out of my face, now. Are you asking why I'm in such a bad mood right now? Ancient creatures have infested the Dodongo's Cavern. We've had a poor harvest from our special crop, the bomb flowers. Starvation and hunger because of the rock shortage. But, that's a Goron problem. We don't need any help from strangers. I'm gonna turn that friggity frown right, right upside dizzy. Right here. He really likes this song. There's a hint for this. Um, one of the hallways on the outer ring of Goron Cave. There's a Goron sitting there, and he's like, "You know, there's a music coming from this hallway, and it it, it just it really upbeat, and it makes me feel really good. And when you walk down it, you start to see some foresty stuff, and you realize that that's the pathway into the Lost Woods. So the clue there is the Gorons like the music from the Lost Woods. I'll play that to him, and he'll snap out of his funk." What a nice tune. 
Just like that, my depression is all gone. Something just came over me. I suddenly wanted to dance like crazy. I am Darunia. I am the big boss of the Gorons. Was there something you wanted to ask me about? What? You want the spiritual stone of fire, too? The spiritual stone of fire, also known as the Gorons Ruby, is our race's hidden treasure. But hold on, I'm not gonna just give it to you that easily. If you want it so badly, why don't you go destroy the monsters inside of the Dodongo's cavern and prove you're a real man? That way everyone will be happy again. If you do it, I will give you anything you want, even the spiritual stone. I have something for you. I'm not really giving you this in return for anything, but take it anyway. If you wear this, even a little fella like you can pick up a bomb flower using A. Magic stuff! Or the Goron bracelet, the bracelet of super strength. You can pull up bomb flower, stand next to one, and use A to pull it up. Hell yeah. And it's even on my little wristy wrist, isn't that nice? Guys, we have our mission. And it's to fuck shit up. Oh yeah, right. Okay, check this out. You know what? Let me put the slingshot back on there. And there we go. Now I have all of my useful items. Check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out. We're gonna go steal fire from the gods and give it to mankind. Just like that guy from that alien movie. Prometheus. That's a fucking good reference right there. <laughs> spinning. Why am I spinning? Okay, bomb flowers, bomb flowers, bomb flowers. Where can I find a bomb flower? Really? Here's some. Let me throw it! How do I... How do I do this? Aha! Here's how I do this. This one's much closer. Oh, come on! I pushed the throw button! Sounds like me playing hots. Get it? Ho! Push the throw button. I've had some bad games in hots recently, man. Silver is not an easy league to play in. The weirdest things happen. Oh my freaking gourd. Alright, well, at least I can go into this shop. This guy have anything interesting to sell? Bombs, hearts, and the Goron tunic. Okay, I can't actually use any of that yet. I need the bomb bag in order to pick up. You know what I'll do? I'll come back to this puzzle. I'm supposed to throw bombs into that jar and I can get a piece of heart. I'm gonna come back to that puzzle after I get the bomb bag, which I get in the Dodongo Cavern. I was playing Heroes of the Storm a bunch this week and I decided, you know what? I usually play quick match and unranked, but fuck it. I literally have nothing to lose by playing ranked. All that's gonna happen is I'm probably gonna get better um, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna do one thing really quick, and then I'm gonna come back out here. I'm gonna open the shortcut to the forest. That's what I'm gonna do. Which, where is... Am I crazy? I thought it was... Oh, it's down two levels, that's where it is. Right here. I, but, like, I, I was like, what, what's going to happen is I'm going to have better team compositions because we're actually going to be drafting, which is why I was playing unranked. But, maybe I will, you know, have some more serious games because it's ranked. Maybe people will take the game a little bit more seriously. Because, like, you get into Unranked, and occasionally it's a really good draft, and everything goes great, and everything goes your way, and you're awesome. And occasionally you get in there, and someone starts dropping, like, racial slurs first thing. 
Like, it's some asshole first pick Nova that's like... You know... You see words better support me and we're gonna kick ass. Like, I don't want to play with you. Like, you make me upset and sad and angry all at the same time that you're a member of my species. Like, get the fuck out of my life. So I didn't want any part of that. I was like, you know what? Maybe ranked will be better. No. Nope. No, no. First of all, no. Secondly, no. Thirdly, no. Not really. But the other thing that, like, weirdly happens is... I don't know. Silver is this place where... People think they know a lot about drafting, and then what they do is they start yelling at you about the method with which you draft. Like, my belief is, in Silver, play what you're good at. You know, if, if a hero is low on the win rate, but you are good at them and you're comfortable with them, you are going to outperform somebody who chooses a high win rate hero that is unpracticed at that hero, right? If I need to do deeps, my number one pick is Lee Ming, my number two pick is Greymane. Greymane has a higher win rate for sure. Absolutely true, he has a higher win rate. He is a currently better hero, but I am worse with him. So I don't pick him as often. Same thing with like, with healers, like, I love Lieutenant Morales, Lily, and um, uh, Uther, and Lucio. Lucio is one of the lowest win rate heroes out there right now, as far as I'm aware. I'm pretty sure he's a very low win rate. Um, but I, I pick him sometimes if I feel the comp is correct for a Lucio draft. And I am comfortable with that pick because I am decent at the hero. I had a game where who all was playing. I, I, there was there was this game where I was the Lee Ming in the team. I was it was on Braxis Holdout, which is a map where you have to defend a point. Like you have to defend. It's like a King of the Hill kind of map where you have to defend a spot, and uh, you don't want the enemy to take that spot away from you. Pardon me, everybody. Can I get you to explode right here, please? Baby Dodongos, you guys explode, right? Can I get you to follow me? Yeah, whatever. Ooh, here's some. Come over here, fellas. Sweet. Awesome. Um... Braxis holdout. The draft was. I was on Li Ming. We had an Anubarak tank. We had a Morales healer. Somebody went Sylvanas. And I wasn't super thrilled with that pick, but I didn't contest it because I was like, maybe this guy's like a really solid Sylvanas and really not great at anything else. You know? Like, that's kind of the reason, I, in my opinion, that you would take Sylvanas on Braxis. Like, I don't think she's really all... Like, you don't really need her on that map. You need a, you need a team that's going to defend the point, right? Um, and we had one other player, and I forget what they were doing. Um, but we, we basically had, like, a solo DPS comp. Which is a little scary, right? Like, you have to play a specific way if you've got one person supplying most of the damage. So I was playing very safe. I was staying behind the tank. I was staying in the back line. And I was shooting my arcane orbs and all that jazz. I was trying to keep people off the point. I was doing an okay job. And I was trying to sneak attacks in on the enemy healer and the enemy Vala. Like, they had a really high damage uh, range DPS on their team that was kind of kicking a lot of ass. So I'm trying to get picks on their weaker characters. And I'm not going out of my way to attack their Leoric and their Sonya, which were a very strong frontline combination in the, in the match. Oh yeah, shit, I'm supposed to block like this. Attack. Um, and what ended up happening was our Anubarak would dive the back line and then die because our Morales couldn't keep up with him.
and then he would blame the team for failing him. And I'm going, you're diving pretty deep. We're not a dive comp. Like, we're really not equipped to follow you into battle in this way. You gotta sort of stay behind and protect us. You should be using your your burrowing charge or whatever it's called to escape from danger. But not only was he diving out of range and getting himself killed, he would also pick fights that were just not... You shouldn't pick these fights. Like, we were level 9 and they were level 11. And we go and try to pick a fight against them, like, 4v5. And I'm going, they have their entire team, we're missing somebody, and they have their level 10s, and we don't. Like, this is a losing fight, we should not be here. The tank dies, and he's like, this team sucks, there's no support, there's this, that, and the other. You know, GG Blizz, bad team. And I'm going, are you hearing yourself right now? Like, what is happening? And I'm going, man, I guess this is just who... I, is this what Silver is? Am I... Thinking this way because of my mentality of, I just gotta try to do my best not to get killed. Like, my whole game plan in Heroes of the Storm is, dude, try your best not to get killed, stick with the team. If you can stick with the team and not get killed, you've succeeded. In return, I will sell you Deku Sticks. One piece, 15 rupees. I do not need your Deku Sticks, said Sam I am. I do not need them. No, ma'am. I was just like, I don't understand the mindset of, like, we just gotta get in there and beat their ass until we're done beating their ass, and then we'll, we'll have beaten their ass. Like, that's not how you play heroes, dude. And I'm trying to figure out why I'm thinking the way I'm thinking, and other people in my league are not. And the only thing I can think of is because I listen to Core and Into the Nexus, and I watch, like, Kyle Ferguson's show, and I, I watch all that stuff. It's the only thing I can think of. I don't think I'm a better player, I just think I'm a more careful player, and I can recognize a situation where if I dive in here, I'm going to die. But, like, mechanically speaking, I'm not very good at that game. Comparatively speaking. Um, I had another game where I was Lili, the healer, and uh, I was, again, my mantra is, stick with the team, don't die. Stick with the team, and don't die. Especially if you're on a healer. You do not want to be out by yourself doing nothing when you're a healer, man. Like, you gotta be with the group. So, um... Shit. Come on. Poke him in his tail. Get him in his little tail feathers. There we go. So we're, we're on Garden Terror. And our tank is a Johanna. And she... It's a couple of minutes into the game. We've already had one or two Garden Terrors come by. And, um... She's in mid lane... Like... Soloing... The... The creep. Which is fine. But the rest of us... Decided we were gonna go take... Our northern camp. We... Oh, okay. All the... All the torches are on this side. We're looking for the torches. The rest of our team decides we're all going to go take, um, we, we, our team spawned on the left-hand side of the map, and on the left-hand side of the map, there's two camps on the south and one camp in the north. So, four of us are on the camp on the north on our side. Johanna is in the middle-ish of mid lane, and she's clearing the minion waves. She pings defend against the enemy camp on the north side as though there's something going on there that we have to have our eyes open for. Which may have been, which was true. It turned out there there were people there. But they were taking their camp, we were taking our camp. It didn't really matter that they were doing that. We, we could just go kill their guys. It definitely wasn't worth attacking them. Like, it, 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 were, it wasn't worth invading. The term is invading when you go and take the enemy side camp. It wasn't worth, to do, worth it to do that. Well... She pings defend while she's clearing that wave of trash. We're all on the other side of the map clearing a thing. She pings defend and then she runs toward that camp by herself. And I'm going, this Johanna is about to die. 
So I break away from the rest of the group because they didn't really need my healing. I just didn't want to be out by myself and be an easy kill for the enemy, right? Like, I didn't want to be an easy... I didn't want to be the guy that gives up a kill for no reason. So I'm sticking with the team because I'm the healer. It's my job. And I see her run to the camp, and I'm like, she's going to die. She's going to walk in there, see three or four of them at least, turn tail and run. And then they're going to snag her because they got an Uther, so they're probably going to stun her ass. So she's going to hit her Laws of Hope to give herself a little bit of extra healing. She's going to hit her, um, her trait to get a little bit of extra shielding, try to run out of that death pit, fail, and die. But if I'm with her and I throw her some heals and I hit the blinds and I'm a little bit on it, potentially she might survive. So I run out there and I do all those things and she dies and I manage to get away because Lily is a little faster than Johanna. And again, I got the blind. Like I, like I, I knew to run. Like I knew I had to be on the edge of safety and just fucking book it if I planned on getting out of there alive, which I did. The tank dies. <clears throat> the rest of the team successfully completes the camp they were working on and the tank starts bitching about you know you really got to follow the tank you can't be off on your own you got to be doing the thing that the tank is doing like the thing that the tank is doing is dying we shouldn't be out doing the thing that the tank is doing when the thing that the tank is doing is fucking dying dude but that's silver that's what happens in that league and it, it it's difficult to play there Oh, come on, kill him! Lame. So with games like that... What? What the f- I, I struck you with my sword. Oh. Didn't mean to throw it, but whatever. So that's how I've been approaching Here's the Storm recently. Finally, I got him. But that's how I've been playing Heroes, and it's just, it's been difficult, man. It's just been hard. And in these games where we're losing, I'm pretty regularly getting pretty high damage and pretty low deaths. Especially if I'm running, like, Li Ming. I can, I can have a Li Ming game where I'm top hero, top siege, zero deaths, and still lose. Like, it's... And I'm not complaining about MMR Hell or anything like that, which it may partially be MMR things. That's not really my complaint. My complaint is... I'm not sure how I improve myself to get out of these situations. I feel one of the things I could do is try to actually land more kills, because frequently I'm very high damage, very low kills, which means I'm chipping away at somebody's health, but I'm not actually removing them from the game. Um, that is an improvement that I can make on myself, but, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's really not easy. All right, um, we are probably in the neighborhood of halfway through Dodongo's Cavern, but I need to pee, so we're going to uh, pause it real quick. We're going to come back in just a minute for another segment of Saturday Night Zelda, and then probably we're going to call it, all right? Right around 9 o'clock, have a tight three-hour thingy-do, and then uh, it'll be fun. Be right back, everybody. <laughs> 